Hello my beautiful people and welcome to my channel. In this space I'm going to be sharing with you monthly general tarot readings as well as my TikTok lives and I'll also be sharing with you essential oil education and excitingly my podcast interviews for my podcast. I'm Kitty O'Brien and thank you so much for joining me here. So for the best free online tarot readings and for the most accurate tarot readings hit that little bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video and the subscribe button. Hello, hello my beautiful people and welcome. So I'm going to be doing a Leo reading. You wouldn't believe I, I record these on different days and every time I start recording my beautiful putty cat comes to join us. So this is Rosie everyone. I think she loves the camera. Yes you do. She's got beautiful green eyes. Rosie sweetie, there's no room for you. Then we have this conversation every time, my darling. So this will be a Leo reading, guys. And Leo is the element of fire. And let's see what the cards say. Right. Oh, yes, so we've got strength. What's coming up as an obstacle is other people getting into your head and you're playing the victim card. Woo! Okay, hang on. Right. I can see you're having some sleepless nights as well. Just moving my notebook aside. Right, I might move that camera down just a smudgeon. Right, so we've got quite a lot of stuff coming up. Quite a lot of stuff coming up. Oopsie. I feel like you're waiting for something to happen. You've laid some seeds, you're waiting for something to happen. You're not quite seeing your salvation yet. But you definitely will in the future. Oh my goodness. I can see you're a very hard worker. Very hard worker. Right, so the first card we got was strength, okay? So strength really represents learning where to pop your energy, where wearing learning where to channel your energy. Um, it's all about yes, it's about taming that lion, but what does that really mean? So Leo is is a lot of, um, well it's the line isn't it? And you can see she's got the infinity symbol over her head as well. So it's, how can I describe this? Right, so you need to learn right now where to put your energy because I feel like you're putting all your eggs into one basket but what you should be doing is you should be looking at the situation and you should be analysing and you should be going, right, I'm going to put a little bit over here, t a smudging over here and just a tad over here. But I'm actually not going to invest anything in here yet because I need to wait to see what happens. And you've got that actually. You've got the Seven of Pentacles is all about waiting. Waiting to see how things unfold. So that really links in with strength, which is they're just opposite each other on the board. Okay, so you, what you really need to learn is to follow that gut feeling, following that instinct. It's not so much about taming the line, taming the instinct. Um, it's about listening to it and following it. Um, like, what is that line saying to you? Oh, and, and don't just, like, go at things, like, you know... Like, I feel like saying, don't just put everything forward and just throw yourself at something. You've got to, yes, so there's that taming involved where you do step back and you, you look at things as well. But it's about having courage as well. Courage not to act immediately. Courage to just to just hold yourself. Um, and that's really difficult when you've got people, because it's come up as an obstacle, the Eight of Swords, really coming at you from all angles, getting inside your head, making you doubt yourself. Um, 
she's in a ring of swords but there is a way she can get out so this card represents a couple of different things depending on what deck you have and actually I've put my witch's tarot is on my bookshelf still but this is really about um, not letting people get into your head not letting people doubt you or making you doubt yourself and and really just feeling that gut feeling listening to that instinct and and knowing yourself and trusting in yourself but it also means stop playing the victim as well depending what tarot deck you're using so sometimes it's really easy to play the victim sometimes it's really easy to go well I got it worse off and god I know so many people who do that it's like yeah but my situation's worse than yours. And it's it's actually no, no, no situation is worse than somebody else's. It's all relative to that person. Um, and there's loads of examples I can think of right now. So it's, it's just, um, life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. So you really need to change that mindset. And if you want to do something, do it. You know, you're the one living this life. You're the one You're the one walking this path. So really just tap into what you want and what you want to do. And have the courage to say no to people as well. Like, I'm going to do what I want to do because I feel this is right for me. So I can really see that you're having a lot of sleepless nights at the moment with the Nine, nine of Swords. But you can, again, get yourself out of this situation. So the story of this card is, can you climb up the Ladder of Swords without cutting your feet? And the answer is yes. Like, there's always another way out. Um... And they've like, they again, okay, so she's blindfolded herself. All she has to do is take the blindfold off. And he's, all he has to do is take the hands off of his eyes. And then he can see the situation differently. So this card is very much about despair and anxiety. It can mean depression as well. Sleepless nights, racing thoughts. It's all about the mind. Swords is all about the mind. It's all about the subconscious mind. It's about the conscious mind. It's about the paradigm. It's all that stuff. Um... And you can get yourself out of this situation. You just have the courage to do it. Well, you just need the courage to do it. Um, and sometimes just waiting and being patient and trusting ourselves is all we need for the situation to sort of resolve itself and unfold. So this card is your desires card. So you really want to sort of sort yourself out emotionally and get your mind sorted as well. Now you're thinking about traveling. Oh, sorry, you may be traveling as well. The Three of Wands um, represents travel. The Three of Wands also represents the element of fire, which is uh, Leo. So I got a scratchy nose there. So it's really, um, you can see standing here, there's the harbour, the ships are coming in and out. So you're really thinking about movement, moving forward. Um, and Wands does represent careers as well. So this could represent a career change. Um, when we think travel, we, you know, it's not just traveling abroad, but you might have a different job to commute to. So there's, but there's definitely travel coming up and it could be, and typically it does mean traveling abroad. So this is sort of anchoring the reading. So this could very well be a possibility in the future. And actually before I continue, I'm just going to get some plant magic going here. Plants are beautiful and they can help us see things from a completely different perspective. So let me get these oracle cards. Oh, Douglas Farr. I love it, I love it, I love it. This is one of the oils I absolutely love. It smells divine. I only use doTERRA. Um, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I've just said sometimes pausing and waiting is the best thing to do. And then we got Douglas Farr. So if you can be quiet for a moment, you will see how supported, you will see how you are supported going forward. So if you can be quiet for a moment, you will see how you are supported going forward. So it's the above chakras, which is the soul chakra and the stellar gateway. So it's the connection to the universe and the spiritual realms. It's the asteroid pan, which is about wilderness, nature, connectivity, fertility and sex. Has the Virgo, so it's about health and well-being, structure and service. And it's the element of air. And swords is the element of air, and that's what's coming up as an obstacle for you. So it's about the intellect, the mental, the beliefs, mindset, perspectives and paradigms. So the universe and your guides are offering protection and nurturing right now. Spending time with some older members of your family will be valuable. 
Consider what you have inherited from your ancestors. What wisdom can you gain? And what destructive tendencies need to be left behind? So this is definitely a destructive tendency right here. And also the Eight of Swords, which is coming up as a blockage for you. Um, give your body a chance to feel clear and refreshed. Definitely can link into strength that that can and step away from technology find some quietness so you can um your truth can emerge all right so you just you desire to feel supported in discovering your own freedom and i love this because we've got the chariot as one of the um future cards and that is all about um freedom and where you're going and movement in your life and you've also got the king of swords as well as a future card um which is about seeing truth so that is amazing. So, so amazing. Um, so an hour before bed, add Douglas fir to your bed, uh, bedroom diffuser and turn on, turn off all technology. Continue to diffuse Douglas fir in the morning, avoiding technology for another hour. Allow insights to arise during this quiet time. I definitely need to do that. I really do. I didn't bring my laptop with me over Christmas because I took some time off. And I came back and I was like, oh my God, I've got so much work to do. But now it's just like on all the time. So I need to I need to step away from that and definitely, definitely have some technology free time. Right. So in your past, okay, you had gifts from the heart. So maybe this was a relationship that's not gone well, or this could be a situation with family members. But you can see that little boy here is giving that little girl literally a cup full of flowers and cups represent emotions and the element of water so and this literally means gift from the gifts from the heart is very innocent it's so um unconditional it's just it's just beautiful it's like a child's love so free and pure and so it could be that you were the one who received that in the past from somebody else or you the you were the one giving that so that's really interesting that that's come up so that's possibly um, I mean, you could even see it this way, that the universe has been supporting you all along and literally giving gifts from the heart, so all these little miracles are happening. But when we don't practice gratitude, we don't always see the little miracles that are happening. And also, um, it's very easy to get lost with that and other people coming in and going blah, 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 and, you know, seeing yourself as a victim as well. It's not appreciating what you already have. Um, but the universe gives us so many things, we just have to ask for it. So when you ask, you will receive. Um, but you also have to graciously give to graciously receive because it's that beautiful equal balance. Now, we've got the King of Wands and the Eight of Pentacles coming up as cards that represent you. King of Wands, he's very fiery. He's very, um, I mean, it could represent a person coming into your life or a person that is already in your life. So... Oh, yeah, I mean, or it could represent an element of you and your personality. So is the king of wands. Again, wands is very, um, very passionate. You know, it's fiery. He's got that spark. His wonder represents like a phallic symbol as well. And then you've got, um, you know, you've got the red cloak as well and the, the, the red crown. And it's actually like shaped as flames on his head. So very char charismatic a lot of people are drawn to him very sexually mature as well um really loves to do things he enjoys he's a bit of a rock star in the tarot world um just a really lovely energy people do feel very drawn to him and he's got that freedom about him he just like he's not impulsive he's very articulated but he um you know, once is the once represents your desires, like your desires, like what are your desires? What do you desire? What do you dream about? What do you wish for? That's all about the element of fire. And it, it can also represent careers, like I said, but it represents your passions as well. Like what, what gets your blood fiery? What, you know, what, what are your passions? Um, and I can see you're such a hard worker with the Eight of Pentacles. And this could be working hard in your relationships or working hard at work. Um, sometimes working harder isn't necessarily the way forward. If you look at Pritchett Price, or Price Pritchett, I always get his name backwards, he wrote U2 Squared, and he talks a lot about um, quantum leaps and, and not um, 
He says sometimes we work harder and actually it doesn't gain anything. We don't gain anything from working harder because it's just more of the same. Sometimes we need a, diff a completely different approach on things. Um, and, and, and if you think about it, some people do work really hard in their jobs. If you think about the people who lay the roads or um, lumberjacks and they do, you know, very physical work. Or if you think about, you know, people working in mines and stuff, very physical work. They work really hard, but they don't necessarily get the most money. And then you look at some people who don't seem to work at all and the money just flows in. So it's, it, Bob Proctor talks about this a lot as well. So just think about it. I can see you're a very hard worker, but maybe you need something different rather than more of the same. Um, like, yep, it's funny how we got the eight and we got the seven. Seven of pentacles represents your hopes and your fears. And it's very much, again, you're waiting for something to happen, You, but this is your hopes and your fears. You're hoping it will turn out well, but then you're fearing it won't. Um, see it happening the way you want it to happen. Don't think, don't play the worst case scenario game. Imagine it happening the way, exactly the way you want it to happen and then that way we activate the law of attraction which is working all the time. We're just making it work for us. So we're not working harder. We are just literally using the natural laws of the universe to get what we want. Um, so imagine if it's an object that you already have it. If it's a relationship, imagine it, imagine it being better. So how, whatever the situation is, just imagine the best possible outcome for you, the most harmonious and loving one as well. And then that will, that's what you attract in. Now we've got quite a few outcome cards. We've got three to support our future card. So what do we have? We've got a Knight of Pentacles. Very slow moving energy. He's he's actually the only um he's actually not moving at all. He's the slowest knight of the deck. He's literally just standing there. And he's holding his coin and he's he's debating, he's thinking, does he plant his seeds in the fields that are ploughed behind him, or does he move forward to somewhere else and start again? And it's interesting, you know, he's contemplating that because we've got the three of ones and that's about moving forward. Now so you better think. You need to. You need to think. What's what's best for you? Do you just wait to see how things unfold, and then move forward? Um, if you know about human design, you'll know that some people they need to. You know they need to wait for an invitation before they can act on something. Um, so just like human design is a whole other thing, actually, and I, I am going to do some readings with human design and essential oils. But that is yeah a whole other ball ball game. But sometimes it's in our nature to. To, to wait and and then see how things go until we got that invitation to move forward. Then we got the five of pentacles. Okay, five of pentacles. You you're not quite seeing your salvation. So this um a cathedral there is offering warmth. It's offering food, shelter, everything these two people need who are stuck out in a, a snowstorm and one of them is injured. But they're not looking at it. They're almost ignoring it. They just won't turn their head to see the help that's available. Now, remember what um, Douglas Fair said? It says, the universe and your guides are offering protection and nurturing right now. Spend time, yeah, with older generation, hang on. Um, give your body a chance to feel clear and refreshed. refreshed. And it said, um, so, Actually, yes, it's up here. If you can be quiet for a moment, you will see how you are supported going forward. So maybe the fact that you're not being still and you're trying to force things when you have, should be waiting for divine timing, maybe that's your the thing you're not seeing. Okay, so sometimes we really just have to wait to see how things unfold and everything happens in divine timing. And we need to accept that as well. Okay, and accept that our, the universe and our guides are offering us protection right now and they're helping and they're guiding us, but we do need to sometimes just wait. And then once we do that, we really start understanding the chariot and the chariot is all about that your life will go where you want it to go. But we also need balance. So we've got the two pillars on each side. We've got the celestial canopy. We've also got the two sphinxes, black and white. So divine masculine and divine female. Um, the white one is the divine feminine, not female, sorry, and the black one is the divine masculine, okay? So there's that beautiful balance of the two energies, there's the, the um, pillars on each side, and the celestial canopy represents the universe and your guides. Now, 
if you want your life to go in a particular direction, it will if you put the energy there. You can't just go, I want that, and then not do anything. And not, you know, there's no action. Uh, or there's sometimes we have to wait before we, we take that next move. So where you put the energy, that's where your life will start moving forward and that's where it will go. But we really need to practice gratitude and the law of attraction to help it move along in the direction we want it to. And then we've got the King of Swords. You can see the butterflies on his throne. So quite masculine energies here. I sort of expected with a Leo because we've got two kings. Um, butterflies represent transformation and enlightenment and the sword pointing upwards represents truth and clarity. So we really start seeing the situation for what it is. We get ourselves out of this sticky situation and we stop playing the victim game and we stop letting people get into our heads. Okay, and that's when we really start moving forward. And that's when life just becomes so much easier for us. And everything just... Oh, it just... Um, everything just flows better. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read, we'll get some healing on it from the um, my other oracle cards and then I'm going to be doing the extended, re extended reading on this. So if you want to watch that it will be on the membership site. I've got loads of different decks down here and I will be using this one which I can't use on YouTube because I'm not allowed to but it is going to be about how to heal some of our traumas i'm going to be talking about mindset as well mindset and miracles and um there's lots of other things um on the membership site that i'm currently building oh the pink dolphin celebration fun on bridal joy and open heart and this pass was the open heart gifts from the heart so let's have a little look Right, here we go. So this is the Healing Waters Oracle Deck by Rebecca Campbell. The Amazon River Dolphin, also known as the Pink Dolphin because of its unique pinkish colouring, is an endangered marine mammal that lives in the fresh waters of the Amazon and the Orin Orinoco River basins in South Africa. So that's O R I N O C O. I've got severe dyslexia, so sometimes my words don't come out right. So, deeply revered is the subject of many local myths and legends. In one, it is said that if you go swimming, swimming alone, the pink dolphins may transport you to the magical underwater, underwater city of Encante. To be near dolphins is an experience is to experience a whole new level of joy and play. This is a card of welcoming more joy into your life. To opening your heart and mind to new experiences and prioritizing happiness and fun. To prioritizing play and taking time off from the monetary of everyday lives. To play like a child without being attached to the outcome. And we did have that come up in the past, didn't we? So I feel like you've lost that a little bit. How can you welcome more joy into your life? What can you do just for fun? What do you want to celebrate? So that's a really great question considering we had um, strength come up. We've had, um, we've had loads of different things come up that really imply that you need to do something. Like the King of Wands is a great example. What are you passionate about? What are your desires? What are your wishes? What are your dreams? What do you like to do? Um, this is a card. This card is a wonderful one to receive, and is an always in, is always an invitation to stop being so serious, to play and have more fun. When we play, we're able to release the pressures and stress that we that we're carrying and switch off, switch off. And then we had Douglas Fir, which said switch off the technology. I think social media does cause a lot of anxiety sometimes, and the news and everything else. Often when we do this, the two hemispheres of the brain can make connections and solutions that we previously couldn't see come flowing in. Oh my goodness, that is the king of swords. Seeing things with truth and clarity. So, 
How can you welcome more joy into your life? And that is the soul inquiry of the card. Right, my lovelies. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you'd like to watch the extended version, please go to the link below. Thank you, my lovelies. Hi, guys. This is